Hello, this is Bill Hunt. Welcome to this short overview and demonstration of business process management in action. If you'd like more demonstrations and a wider selection, you can go to ibmbpmdemos.com. So let's go ahead and get started. This is a visual depiction of a typical business process without business process management. You can see there are a lot of ad hoc activities performed by a number of people including email and email attachments, people sending spreadsheets around, as well as a number of systems. So there's a lot of human-to-human -human and human-to-system interaction. And without business process management, these informal tasks are really inefficient. Uh, there's inconsistent prioritization. There's an overall lack of control and really poor visibility into exactly where we are in the process. And therefore, it's hard to manage, hard to grow, hard to scale. A business process management layer sits in between the people and the systems and it orchestrates those human-to-human -human and human-to-system activities. With the business process management layer we can more easily prioritize and route work, guide users through participating in the process, we can also capture that tribal knowledge that we're dependent upon people to consistently apply to the process as they participate into it and make that a more manageable set of activities. We get better visibility into where we are in the process with the right kind of business metrics and reporting so that we can better manage the process as well as change it more easily over time. The kind of essential BPM capabilities that enable us to do this include ways of modeling the business process both at design time, modeling for documentation, as well as turning that process into a runnable process application that allows us to automate the activities through a workflow, applying that tribal knowledge in the form of business rules, capturing, documenting the business data, and managing that as a payload of a business process, building and changing user interfaces, managing documents and events throughout the process, tying into any existing IT systems and documenting and applying the kind of business metrics and analytics that the business needs to better manage the process in the forms of key performance indicators, thresholds, reports, dashboards. And so these essential BPM capabilities are what we're going to see in the demonstration. So in business process management we really have a life cycle of activities and ideally we want to perform these activities in a roles-based fashion. So throughout design time when we're modeling the business process and implementing it as a runnable process application, throughout runtime when we're executing the business process and participating in it as individual participants, managers and executives, and at analysis time when we're analyzing the process for optimization hotspots, we're using a single unified view of the process. We're ideally using a single process model throughout design time, run time, and analysis time in a continuous life cycle of process improvement. So our first stop on this demo tour is in BlueWorks Live, an online uh, cloud-based environment that we use to model business processes from a web browser. So in here we can document the process with a, a high-level, business-friendly process discovery map. Um, we can add details about the process, the participants, uh, the roles, the business owners, experts, systems, uh, time and cost, the inputs and outputs into and out of these activities, and things like the risk and, and value-added nature. We can capture the tribal knowledge of the team, the, the problems and challenges, and document the severity and frequency. Uh, we can document the details of the process and attach documents that we have and, and, and comment and dialogue about uh, the completeness of our process model, of our process documentation. We can do that with a discovery map and because of the way we do that in the discovery map we automatically generate the swim lanes uh, that are needed to flow this business process. And for activities that are uh, incomplete or not fully documented, we can either fill in the details like the vendor role uh, or we can drag and drop these activities between swim lanes and have that documentation filled up for us. 
We can also use the process diagram view to see the lower levels of detail in the form of subprocesses and fully document the process using a, a business process modeling notation palette to draw out more details in the process. Either at the discovery map layer or at the process diagram layer, we can organize our process into lower levels of detail like subprocesses. And so these are just lenses or views into that single process model that let us easily document the process. There's a documentation view that gives us a, a, a document, a serial view of, of everything we've put into the details of the process. And you can see that it's a summary view. We can take all the information that the team puts into this process model and export it as generated Word documents, nice summary document format of all of the, the details of our process, uh, the problems, the document attachments, and share that with the broader business community. We can also generate PowerPoint documents of our most current business process model and use those for business meetings to socialize and build consensus. In addition to modeling and documenting the process, we can also analyze those details. So with these visual overlays, we can get a quick view of things like the systems, the cycle time. We can overlay that information on top of the discovery map or process diagram. Uh, for instance, uh, we can see risk and value add. This set of non-value added activities might be a candidate for cost containment. Uh, we can see a heat map of the problems throughout our process, a very telling view that gives us a quick inventory of where we're challenged in this process. We can see all the file attachments, quick and easy access to the things that the team is attached to the process for collective documentation. When two or more people are collaborating on the process, you can see in the bottom half of the screen, Ray is perusing the templates library to get a quick start on doing some modeling, and Bill on the top half, and perhaps some other uh, state or country anywhere on the internet, can see that Ray's online and invite him to join him on this particular process model. So now, as Ray works with this process, adding an activity and changing some documentation, uh, Bill can see it happen live. Uh, as Bill makes changes to the process uh, and moves uh, that documentation around, uh, Ray can see that process model change in, in near real time. So this near real time collaborative environment makes it easy for the team of two or more people to easily collaborate uh, real time on the process. So now if we want to take that process model from a model of documentation and analysis into uh, a model for execution where we can actually run this process, we can simply from within our process designer environment, uh, now a desktop tool, we can connect to BlueWorks Live and pull in all that process documentation and then carry it forward into a, an executable process. So we can see all the process uh, and sub-processes came in. We can open it up and then get more detailed about how we want to model this for execution. You can see in this process model that not only the main process came in, but all the sub-process levels of detail. So all of our work on the BlueWorks Live environment uh, is seamlessly carried forward into our process designer where we model for execution. So now we're going to spend some more time in process designer taking a look at how we model this for execution. Let's first use the uh, playback, the run button, to run a finished version of this process, and then we'll give you a view of how, how we built it out. So when we run the process, uh, we can run it at any time. It's always runnable, no matter how much or how little we've implemented about the process model. And when we run it, it shows us where we are in the process. We can claim a particular activity, in this case a human activity. We can see the user interface for this activity. And, uh, and so it's very easy to run it and play it back to the business and IT stakeholders at any time. To give you a taste for how we built this out, we can see in this process model we added some data definition to the process. We could harvest this and pull it in from existing systems or type it in as part of a live design session. When we add new activities to the process and build them out, like this new manager activity, we can simply get a jump start on implementing this activity as either a human service or system service, a, a business role. Um, and in this case, a human service, which has a user interface, we can name that, that first screen and see what it gave us a jump start on. It created a user interface with some of the high-level data elements. And now we can go through an iterative playback session with uh, the business stakeholders talking about how they want this screen to look. 
So we can simply drag and drop the elements around and run it at any time, playing it back to the business stakeholders, and then iterate through making changes, like the business might uh, indicate that this planner comments field is a really important field on the screen that they use for collaborative comments between participants in the process. So we'll make that a bit more prominent and larger on the screen. Uh, we can iterate through that, making these UIs as simple or complex as we like, and then we can wire that new activity into the process. Again, being runnable at any time, we can incrementally and iteratively run this and play it back to the business, getting uh, feedback on, on how this looks. So let's run the process. We can see this new first activity has been built out. We can type something in the planner comments field and see if it's actually running and carried through the payload of the process. When we proceed to the second activity in the process, we can see that indeed that data was carried through the payload of the process from activity one to activity two. So in this iterative fashion, we can build out the process a little bit at a time and, uh, and, and end up with a very collaborative relationship between business and IT. Now, if we take a look at this manager activity that we were building out, it really just has one screen. We can make that uh, more elaborate. We can have multiple screens, those yellow boxes, and we can have multiple reusable services that come anywhere from IT. Like this Get Available Vendor service that will get a list of vendors before we display that vendor screen. Uh, now, these reusable services are just that, reusable. We can go to the process library to the implementation uh, components section and use some quick type ahead to sift or filter the list of reusable components down to that get vendors element. We can see that that reusable service can be dragged and dropped not only into an activity but also into any process or subprocess. So they're truly reusable. And drilling down into it, we can see the details of that reusable service. So in the process library, um, we have uh, access to all the elements of processes as reusable components, processes, subprocesses, user interfaces, integration components, decision rules, data, performance metrics. Uh, and so it's very easy to navigate all the elements of a process, including this toolkit section, which is simply a, an area where we can surface any reusable components from the IT landscape. So anything in the IT landscape, integrations, back-end systems, uh, components from other systems can be surfaced here and dragged and dropped out into the process. So we can drag and drop out some of these reusable components like a back-end uh, order update integration, some business rules, and we can wire that into the process as a, a part of a decision about whether there are additional fulfillment rules. So once we wire that into the process, uh, then those elements, those reusable IT components are, uh, are now part of the process and when we run it, uh, they will run as well. We drill down into this uh, orders update backend service. We can see this subprocess or uh, composite service has uh, some detail to it. So there's lower levels of detail connecting to a backend system, database interaction, a web service call, uh, an update to that backend system. And so we can we can pull in anything from the IT landscape. Now we leverage integrated version control so that as other teams are building these, in this case, enterprise SOA services, these reusable components, we can call these toolkits anything we like. Um, we can reference different versions of other teams' work and it changes right before our eyes. We get a notification of, of when things are uh, or have been updated, that little triangle, and then it's up to us whether we want to go ahead and use those different versions. And when we do, they're immediately available. So now let's spend some time in the end user experience with the process portal uh, as individual participants, managers, and executives. So let's go over to the process portal and see out of the box the process portal that works with any business process that we build out. You can see a color-coded inbox of our activities, our tasks that are overdue, at risk, or on track. We drill down into one of those activities. We can see that same single version of the truth, that same picture of the process. In this case, we can see where we are, a manager, uh, is uh, in the manager approval step in the process. So we have clarity on where we are in the process. We claim an activity and work with it. You can see with a little bit more mouse aerobics we can build out more sophisticated screens including live reports with simple drag and drop and uh, participate in the process in an optimal fashion. We also can manage the team. We can drill down on this at risk piece of the pie and see only those activities across our team that are at risk of going overdue. We can see when activities are going to go overdue in the future as well as the distribution of work uh, across the team. We can see the work uh, and how it's distributed across the team, which might lead to a decision about how we prioritize some of these at-risk items or perhaps reassign them to other members of the team. We can see the overall process performance. 
uh, trending across days, weeks, and months, and we can see the volume and velocity of some of our most high volume activities like manager approval and drill down into the on-track at risk and overdue items. We can also build um, process specific reports, ad hoc reports, with simple uh, drag and drop. Uh, and as is the case here, we can see that manager approval is taking a, a long time to complete. Uh, so let's spend some time in the process optimizer part of uh, the um, process designer and take a look at how the process per is performing. We can slice and dice the data into different time frames. We can see a heat map of wait time, the heavier red lines around the activities that are taking more or less time. Uh, we can use different heat maps like the path analysis heat map to take a look at, for instance, all of the approved and rejected items coming out of that manager approval activity. All of the 30% of elements of activities or orders that are approved, the 25% of the orders that were rejected, and see all the data down below. And we can use that spreadsheet icon to share that data with the broader analysis team. We can also get alternate views of this data, like for instance the percent of instances outside range. In other words, 69% of the time this activity is taking longer than the business expects it to take. 54% of the time this activity is violating our SLA with the business. It's taking longer than the business expects it to take. So just scratching the surface on the optimization analysis of, uh, of BPM to give you better clarity into how your process is performing and where the opportunities for optimization lie. If you'd like to get more in-depth demonstrations, more modular demonstrations on BPM, you can go to ibmbpmdemos.com and there you'll find a collection of tutorial demos that are both uh, streaming in YouTube format as well as downloadable and viewable offline uh, and printable hands-on exercise uh, directions. So you can watch these videos to get an idea of how BPM uh, works in action in more detail. Uh, you can also go to ibmbpmdemos.com to fire up in the cloud an online trial environment to take BPM for test drive.